The Health Fix Podcast teaches you how to take charge of your health naturally by giving you the information you need to elevate your health. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause, and today I'm doing another solo podcast. So I've been getting a lot of questions about my perspective on pain and what I do in my office to help folks to get moving through their pain, resolve their pain, or at least reduce their pain. So here's the thing. Pain is a royal pain in the butt, literally, because it oftentimes it's invisible. So our family members, our coworkers, our bosses just can't see it. So they don't understand it. And that could be incredibly frustrating because when someone can't see an injury or a chronic issue. It's almost like it's not there. And a lot of times you're treated like you're making it up. I hear from patients all the time that they come into the doctor's office and tell the doc about their pain. And either it's, here's a prescription, get out of my office. Or it's like they're, they're hypochondriacs or they're malingering as the word in the medical field goes. And sadly, this is often not the case. Because a lot of times what we find is that the source of the pain is not something that we, we think of in terms of traditional medicine. See, there's not an injury. There's not a wound. There's nothing that provoked this pain and all of a sudden it's there. It doesn't mean that it's not real. So the point of today's podcast is I am going to be talking about pain how it affects your body and what you can do on a basic level to help your body to deal with pain. Because what we're doing right now is we're going to try, in the U.S., we're trying to get folks off of opioids. We're trying to help with the pain management, but we're not thinking about the basics. And I love my Chinese background for helping me with addressing pain because it goes on a level that a lot of times it's overlooked in the conventional medicine world in terms of how to deal with pain. Because a lot of times the pain solutions are medication, surgery, burning of nerves. I mean, close to amputation in some cases. I, I, I don't know anyone that's had joints amputated for just pain. There has to be other issues. But the point being is why would we burn nerves? Why would we take discs out and fuse them? Why would we do these things if the pain is related to something basic. So many people have surgeries and don't feel better after surgeries. And this pains me greatly because there are solutions and there are ways to work with your pain because pain is more than just what it is. It's the body keeping you inflamed. It's a signal that something needs to be fixed. The question is, is it the location of pain that really needs to be fixed or do we need to look deeper than that? How inflamed is your body total? Does your circulation suck? Are you, in terms of Chinese medicine, considered damp, meaning too much fluid buildup in the body causing those nerves to get agitated? There's a lot of things to be thinking about here when you think about pain. It's not just that you have a nerve issue. It's not that you have a muscle issue, a tendon, a ligament issue. You have some foundation issues, basic issues in terms of stuck blood, which is a Chinese medicine term, blood stagnation, which you might be like, okay, she's freaking crazy. Blood stagnation is poor circulation, translated to English, very poor circulation. Many of us have poor circulation because we're stressed out. Our blood's in our arms and legs, but it's not in our tendons and ligaments. And we're not getting nutrients to our injuries because our body is primed to run us, uh, like get us away from a bear or something chasing us. It's not primed to be dealing with just a chronic low level irritation. We also don't get circulation to our tendons and ligaments very often because they just don't have blood blood vessels to get to them. You have to actively move them. You have to actively get the lymphatic circulation. So lymphatic circulation, by the way, is the way we transport fluids 
in the body and toxins from byproducts of metabolism. If your lymphatic system doesn't work well, that's another way of stuck blood. But in the Chinese medicine principles, we take it a step further. That's dampness. When I look at pain, according to Chinese medicine, I look at it very basically. Is the pain a hot condition? So meaning, does the person have a hot sensation? Does the area feel warm? Does it feel hot, burny to that person? Do they have warm, burning, poking, stabbing, any of that hot stuff? Is that happening? Then I look at cold. Is it cold? Is it worse when the temperature gets cold? Is that pain worse when you put ice on it? Same thing goes for that hot pain. Is it worse when you put heat on it? Then I'm looking at, like I said, stuck blood circulation. And I take stuck blood to a whole nother level in terms of the lymphatics, things of that nature. Now, Chinese medicine also has another differentiation called qi deficiency. Qi is energy in the body. It's how we move electrolytes. It's how we move electrical charges through the body. It feeds back to circulation. If your body is not good at circulating blood, most of the time you're going to have some qi deficiency. You can't move your nutrients. If your body sucks at moving your lymphatics, so detoxifying, maybe you've got puffy, so lines around your ankles when you wear socks, and you suck at kind of moving things through the body, your, your ring marks you have from wearing rings, that's poor lymphatic circulation. This is directly related to pain. And going further, it's directly related to something called qi deficiency. Lack of energy to move your nutrients and toxins through your body. So folks that have puffy eyes, some folks have this genetically. Some folks, this is their this is their lifestyle. This is also, you know, so stress, also not sleeping. You get puffy eyes. You drink too much alcohol. You get puffy eyes. You eat foods that don't agree with you. You get puffy eyes. What does that all equate to in terms of simplicity? Toxins in your body. You drink too much. You build up toxic load. Your body sucks at moving your lymphatics. You don't sleep. You can't restore and recover and detoxify. Simple as that. So what we're looking at here. With that stuck blood, stuck chi or energy, we're looking at poor lymphatic circulation, poor circulation in general. Now, hot and cold on those levels are related to how much inflammation or how much your body's just straight up forgot about that area. Hotter stuff usually can have more signals to the brain because it's like hot area of chronic inflammation, like fiery inflammation messages coming from brain and coming back down are going to brain and coming back down. Cold areas that feel cold to the touch, but are chronic low grade pain. This is where your body had the fiery sensation at one point and the fire burnt out. Your body's like tired of dealing with this, but it's still dealing with it. So signals of need to still fix this are going to the brain. Messages back down from the brain are, okay, let's just kind of give it a little bit of inflammation response, a low grade inflammation response. It's not like put out the fire now by having more inflammation. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep putting that there. The longer the body deals with low-grade inflammation being signaled to an area of injury or an area of pain, the more the body loses the ability to adjust inflammation, meaning the body loses the ability to correct that inflammation. So what ends up happening long-term here? Sadly, you start to attack yourself. And this is where we get autoimmune conditions. This is where autoimmune arthritis, if we break it down, rheumatoid arthritis is a hot inflammation condition where the body is over attacking joints. Why does it happen? Because we can't pull those inflammatory proteins out of that area fast enough. Poor circulation, poor lymphatic flow. How do we improve that? I'm going to talk about that. So this case of looking at the basics Chinese medicine-wise in terms of hot, in terms of cold, in terms of dampness, these are real deal things that I like to think about on a daily basis as to what am I dealing with with pain. Now, those folks that might be listening to this who have done even more depth, in-depth look into Chinese medicine, yes, there's blood stagnation and there's, you know, different degrees of that and there's different degrees... But I'm breaking it down simply here, folks. So if you want to nitpick me, nitpick me. But I'm breaking it down. 
in terms of something that just really has made more sense for me to think about pain on this level. Now, let's look a little bit about this immune signaling thing. Because most of us are stressed out. We might not have a life that's stressful, but we might be doing things in our life that create stress for us, like skipping meals, like not taking time to rest, having chronic insomnia, having circulation issues. Circulation issues are a direct effect of being stressed, but also sitting around and not doing things, so being lazy, or not being lazy per se, but being in so much pain, you can't really move well. This is going to promote more of a circulation issue. So what I'm saying here, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm calling you lazy because you're not moving because you're in pain. Please don't think that. I'm saying it in terms of folks who can move, do not have pain to the level of can't move. You're impeding your circulation. Those of you who have pain to the level where it's hard to move, we've got to think about creative ways to increase your circulation. We have to think about ways to move that blood. Essential oils. Topical treatments are incredible for this. Magnesium, another thing. Now, I'm going to get to that in a minute. What I really want to get to is how do we, how do we create these problems for ourselves? Because I think this is a biggie for a lot of folks to understand. How do we have so much chronic pain in the U.S.? or the world for that matter. How do we have so much chronic pain that nothing is helping it? How is it that you can be taking copious amounts of opioid medications and your pain doesn't go away? How is it that some folks can take CBD and it does nothing for them? And they even add maybe the THC and the CBD and nothing happens. Why is it? It's because we're not looking at the basics. We're not addressing the basics. CBD and THC, yes, that's working on your nervous system to put it into a chill state. But if you haven't corrected your circulation to get nutrients in and nutrients out, of course it's not going to work. So getting back to basics, circulation. I want you to look at your life as a whole right now or your health as a whole. And I want you to just really take a look at how really good is your circulation. Wow, that's proper English. How good is your circulation? Like I mentioned before, do you get puffiness in your legs? Do you have sock lines when you are at the end of your day? Is that a thing for you? How deep are those sock lines? Can you touch your shin and you push your finger in and you've got a divot that stays there for over... 30 seconds. That's more severe fluid and circulation issues. How many varicose veins do you have? If you have big varicose veins and you're starting to notice more spider veins, and maybe these came out after a pregnancy or now they're starting to come out as you get older, this is a circulation issue. This is something to pay attention to. If you wake up in the morning and your rings don't fit very well, And you get puffiness, like a line from that ring. You you can pull it off, but you get a line from where that ring was. That is poor circulation. Not good. If you have puffiness, like I mentioned under your eyes, that is a sign of poor circulation. I'm calling myself out. I have issues with puffiness under my eyes. I have issues with puffiness in my body in general. I am constitutionally a damp individual, meaning that my body really sucks at taking toxins out of it and fluid transport. I need to work all the time on lymphatic drainage, on lymphatic movement for my body. Those of you who have cellulite, cellulite is a sign that you have poor lymphatic drainage in the area where you have the cellulite. I am prone to cellulite. I have to work on my drainage all the time, like I said. And you can see, even now, I still have some puffy. And there are different degrees of puffy that I will get based on how things are going. Right now, my biggest issue I'm struggling with, and I'm just going to call myself out on it, is that sleep. Sleep is hard for me, so sleep will show right on my face. Digestive system issues will also show on my face. Because my body cannot, when I go to bed overnight help recover everything because I'm not sleeping to the quality that I want to. I'm working on it. Everyone's a work in progress. That's why I do this podcast. We're all works in progress. Some of us are just a couple steps ahead of each other, but I'm telling you that 
you're not alone if you're struggling with pain and having circulation and detox issues. I do have chronic pain. I have chronic pain in an ankle that I injured a long time ago. I have chronic back stuff. And I work on it through improving circulation and lymphatic movement. Now, the other big thing here related to chronic pain is the immune system regulation. If you're eating crappy food, if you're eating okay, but you're drinking a lot of alcohol, if you're eating on the run and not sitting down to eat, these are all going to have an impact on your body's ability to control inflammation. Stress will also impact your ability to control inflammation through your gut because stress beats up your gut lining. So what is a person to do about this? You want to be working on what happens during your eating. Slowing down, taking time to eat, taking time to process the foods and experience your foods. Now, I talk a lot about digestive system and how it trashes your gut. But what I'm getting at, and then that's in previous podcasts, but what I'm getting at here is if you have chronic pain, you need to be able to signal to your body that nothing is chasing you when you're eating food. You want to work on digestion like it's like your job because you want those nutrients to get to the areas that you have pain. Because if your tissue is properly nourished, We can reduce the signals of inflammation and and pain and needs to be fixed signals back to your brain. That's one thing. The other big thing about immune signaling is trying to help to flush out those inflammatory proteins that just keep coming up over and over and over again in an area of pain. How do we do that? Two ways. One, you break down those proteins by taking an enzyme. Bromelain is a great, what we call systemic enzyme. Yes, you can take it with a meal to help you digest food, but in between meals, it helps your body to process inflammatory proteins floating around in your system, causing you pain. Chronic pain, whole body, fibromyalgia, you name it, neuropathy, etc. you could benefit from a systemic enzyme to help you break down those inflammatory proteins. The other way to go about it is to work on flushing those areas of pain. Infrared saunas, amazing for helping you to flush pain out of your body. I can't say enough about them. I have a panel versus a sauna. You can use panels, whatever it may be. So I use the Juve Light. I like variety of different infrared saunas, Creatrix brand, by the way. I had a podcast with Eileen Durfee at one point head back and check that podcast out about infrared and incandescent lighting and in terms of helping you to to heal yourself from poor circulation, over immune system response. So going back, I mentioned working on eating well and taking the time to get the nutrients, like literally experience your food so you can get your nutrients to where they need to be. Number two, systemic enzymes. Number three, infrared light therapy. Number four, contrast hydrotherapy. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. You're flushing the area. You're creating microcirculation within the area of paint. This is way more specific for those of you that have issues that are localized, like chronic hand pain, chronic elbow pain, things of that nature. This can be extremely useful to help you to bring in the good new stuff, so bring in more blood, and then flush out the old toxic stuff. Because the more that you're not getting rid of the inflammatory markers that keep telling your brain that there's something that needs to be fixed in a certain area, the more you're going to keep having inflammation. The more you're going to keep having pain, the more those signals just keep happening to create the immune system response over and over and over again in that area of pain. So... The idea here is helping your own immune system to stop being on over attack and over inflame because the expanded thing here is if you go beyond having a low level of chronic inflammation, you go into autoimmune attack. And this is where we get autoimmune attacks, autoimmune arthritis, autoimmune things of that nature. Now, what do you do in this case? This is a severe case. You've got to be looking at your diet 
There are things like the website autoimmunewellness.com. I love this because it's called AIP Paleo, fancy term for eating in a low inflammatory way to reduce the inflammation going in your mouth so that you can reduce the inflammation systemically. I also do recommend for anyone with autoimmune arthritis, autoimmune neuropathy, autoimmune anything really that's related to pain is to consider systemic enzymes of some sort. Bromelain is kind of like the basic one. There are more advanced. You can message me to learn more about that. But the point being is looking into systemic enzymes to help your body control inflammation. I also highly, highly recommend stress management as the big picture here. The more that your body thinks that you are going to have to run away from a bear, Because you are chronically stressed, the more that you're going to keep having chronic pain. Most of the time when folks are chronically stressed, there's also an underlying history of some trauma. Trauma lives in the body as pain very often. You've stuffed your pain down and now it's living in certain locations. How do you release that? It takes time. But one of the ways to start to work on all of that that's built up in the body is to lower the inflammation in your body. Help on working with circulation. Help on working with the lymphatic circulation. Think of the basics. Oxygenation is another big one here. If you're not sleeping well and you haven't had a sleep study, you need to get one to make sure that you're oxygenating overnight. I even tell folks in my office to buy a a cheapy pulse ox, 20 bucks on Amazon, and see how well you're oxygenating. Put it on for a little bit during when you first wake up, put it on before bed. Challenge yourself to wake up in the middle of the night. If you already do, then who cares? Put it on and see what you're oxygenating at. If you're not oxygenating at least 98% at sea level, if you're in altitude 96 to 94 is okay. If you're in the low 90s, You need some freaking oxygen. How do we get oxygen? Well, you can supplement with it and that can help, but movement. Now, a lot of you might be like, I am in pain, doc. How can I move? Swimming's one. Unfortunately, right now I'm recording this during COVID, so that might be hard for you, but you could consider a swim spa, something of that nature. Now, you might say, doc, hot, hot, damp water bothers me. Okay, don't put it so hot. Who said you had to put the hot tub to 111 or whatever the ridiculous number is? I think 104. I've had people drop them down and have a good temperature. We can just get in there and move. We got to be thinking outside the box here. I also do recommend cold plunges for some folks after they've really warmed their bodies up with exercise. I think there's something to it. I think Wim Hof and his breathing, there's something to that whole thing in terms of quick shut down the inflammation response. I also believe that breathing, parasympathetic breathing, after workouts helps too. Now I've gone off on a tangent. I'm going to jump us back into what I was talking about for chronic pain, movement. Tai Chi, one of my favorite ways to just get flow and movement, walking. Walking is incredible for your body and it works every single part of you because you're working on breath, you're working on core to, because you're standing up. It's, it's nice. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a power freaking walker. Just getting up and moving. All right. So I've kind of went through the whole series in terms of what Chinese medicine sees pain as and the basics. Now, I want you to be thinking a little bit here about what could you try? What's realistic for you? Because I give a lot of information in these podcasts, I know, and sometimes I can I can have it a little bit overwhelming. And my goal is not to do that. I want to simplify things for you. I want to simplify health for you. So I want you to try something from this podcast. And I want you to think of it in terms of what can you do to help with circulation? Might you be able to move a little bit more? Might you be able to do mobility for the joints? Start with your wrists, go to your elbows, move them, move your neck, move your head, move your spine. I did a great podcast with a chiropractor down in Texas on spinal hygiene. It's four simple moves. You bend your, you bend forward, you lean back as far as you can, you lean to the side, you lean to the other side, and then you rotate left and right. That's spinal fluid movement. So circulation within your spine, super easy stuff, and it doesn't even take more than a minute. Next thing is moving your hips, moving your knees, moving your ankles, moving all your toes and fingers. On an hourly basis, for example, can help you. The other thing that enhances circulation is considering something topically. 
Essential oils are all the rage right now. doTERRA has deep blue. I love Dr. Bob's medicated oil. It's cinnamon. It's peppermint. It is licorice root, and there is some dragon's blood in there, which sounds super scary, but it's a plant. And there's a little bit of skull cap. Now, these are plants that help to initiate a response on the skin level. It's an irritant. So the body feels that and goes, oh, what's that? Bring blood there. And you can take advantage of this bring blood there by moving blood back away by using a little bit of cool. I don't think you have to use ice in this situation. I like invoking three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold or cool to help just get your body circulating. If your hands hurt you all the time, okay, how about three minutes in a warm bath, you know, a little warm bath, put your hands in like a bucket or something, and then 30 seconds in a cool bath and do that three times. Then apply the Dr. Bob's again, or you could do it before you could do it after. I, I personally would say, to be honest, I, I, I like to do it after because with the water, you wash them off. So then you do it after. Now you've got enhanced circulation because you've used a counter irritant. Grapefruit, cinnamon, cayenne, and mustard have all been used forever to help with cellulite. They've also been used to help with promoting circulation on a topical level. They're used in a lot of products just for that. Ginger's another one. Why do we use these things? Because they're irritants. They provoke the body to do something. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, if those are like hot, like spicy, wouldn't they mess up someone who has like a lot of heat in a certain area? Yes and no. If that heat happened because you just injured yourself, yeah, I wouldn't be putting the the hot stuff on there. I'd be doing three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold though, to help with circulation, but I would not be putting those on. I would be putting those on when you've had heat in an area that's been chronic for a long time to help to promote circulation. Because what it does is instead of that heat being stuck, say in your wrist, now you get it moving a little bit because you put the, the oil here, but you also not just here, all the way down your arm, put it on the inside of your arm up to towards your armpit. Don't put it in your armpit. That's not bueno. Don't do that. But going up to, because you can work on the lymphatic circulation. You can't just put a topical on the body and just leave it. That's one of my big things I, I do have to say with a disclaimer. Yeah, you can put it on acupuncture points and you can leave it there and then you need acupuncture with that or something to get the circulation going. You have to move your tissue. And this is why I love, love, love lymphatic drainage and just myofascial work. Anyone can do this. You can brush your skin just like that once you put a topical on. So say you put a combination of essential oils on your wrist because your wrist hurts. Then what do you do? Raise your wrist up over your head and move the circulation down towards your heart. So you're just literally like brushing your arm, giving it a little bit of a basic massage towards your heart. That's moving your circulation. Simple as that. And we just don't think about it because it's not something that's taught. But in the Chinese medicine world, it's like, the the thing, right? So acupuncture. Let's talk about this for a second because I think a lot of people are wondering what in the world does acupuncture really do and can it really help with pain? The reason acupuncture helps with pain is because you're sticking a needle into the body and getting a response. Your body brings blood to that needle and goes, okay, let's bring blood here because something stabbed me. You can't just put a needle in one spot and expect everything else to, to work. No, you got to put needles on a channel elsewhere in the body to create a line for which the body to be irritated because you stab something. I mean, I don't want to say stab. That sounds terrible. Like acupuncture is terrible. Well, your body thinks you have a little wound anywhere you put the acupuncture needle. And so what happens is blood flows through all those needles in the areas where you put them. And then when you take them out, your body now is going to move the blood flow away from that area. You're increasing microcirculation by doing acupuncture. So this is why for folks who have pain, they feel more relaxed when they have acupuncture needles in. We're enhancing circulation. We're enhancing circulation of endorphins, neurochemicals that help you feel chill. So what I'm getting at here is acupuncture can be extremely beneficial for pain because it improves circulation. It also improves circulation on a deeper level in terms of lymphatics because it's going to bring blood flow. When you have deeper needles in, you're going to bring blood flow to the lymphatic system, your drainage ditches. That's why acupuncture helps with swelling and it helps with puffiness because it's working on enhancing the microcirculation in the area. 
and it's moving ions for you. Your red blood cells have charges. Your ions in the body have charges. Things like magnesium have charges. Sodium, potassium. Sodium's positive, er, not potassium. Sodium's positive, potassium's also positive, but sodium chloride is positive and negative. So we're moving charges when we move blood, and the needles help with that. Point being here is that we want to go back to thinking about basics, and I want you to try something. So systemic enzymes, if you are struggling with inflammation in your body, and you can't seem to get a handle on the inflammation response. So maybe you have areas of heat and pain. Maybe you have low levels of chronic pain. Maybe you already have an autoimmune pain condition. Great. Start working on systemic enzymes to help you break down those proteins while you're working on eating better, while you're working on your stress management. Chronic muscle pain. Magnesium is one of my most favorite things for this. Magnesium glycate, glycinate, malate, those are great. Elemental magnesium, also great. Magnesium citrate, not so great because it helps you to go to the bathroom. You don't want that one. But magnesium can be incredible for helping you to relax the muscles because it's an ion. It's positive. It's charge. I love using magnesium topicals like sprays and lotions and oils. It can tingle at first, but it's incredibly helpful. An Epsom salt bath. Great way for those of you who are puffy, puffy eyes, puffy ankles, puffy ring things with pain, Epsom salt baths, because that heat helps you to move your circulation. It gets things moving. It gets the blood flow moving through your muscles versus all of it being stuck waiting for you to run away from some imaginary bear. The hot and cold provoking for specific areas. You're flushing the area. It's like a radiator flush to the, to the joint area or wherever the pain may be. So I highly recommend you guys think about these things and, and try them out. I'm going to give you a little testimonial. So I have a patient. She broke her elbow this year and she was struggling at first. And we had her do some of the three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold constitutional hydrotherapy, as it's called, along with my favorite Dr. Bob's oil. And she, her her pain went down incredibly after starting with that. Did she still have tightness of her muscles? Did she still have some issues? Yes, of course. But here we are now, it's a couple months later, I'd say it's four months to be three or four months later, and she can't barely any pain there, unless she's really overusing the area. She's in her 50s. A fracture to a bone of an area that you move a lot because she broke When I said the elbow, she broke her ulna, fractured her ulna. This is an area that could be highly inflammatory because we use our arms and our hands all day long. And she works as a nurse. Her pain is reduced now because she took the time to have some acupuncture and work at home on constitutional hydrotherapy along with systemic enzymes. She was using bromelain to help to break down that inflammatory protein response. And she's doing quite well now. Now we've moved on to focusing more back on her neck and some of the chronic pain there to help with circulation. One of the other biggies about circulation and this patient in particular, but it it relates to anybody's posture, paying attention to your posture. If you're leaning forward like this and your neck's forward and you're doing tech neck all the time, it's going to impede the way blood circulates through your body. Also going means you got to pay attention to your, your spine. Breathing, another big thing here, helping with circulation, oxygenating well. But in the case of Marianne, she was able to get this pain under control quickly. It didn't linger on. And now that we're three, four months out from a fracture, she's doing quite well. The average individual who fractures a bone after 50 can take up to a year to get rid of that pain. So you can see I sped it up there. If you've injured yourself... And you've ignored it and just been like, ah, whatever, it'll go away. Ah, whatever, it'll go away. The older you are, the more poor habits you have, like poor posture, not taking deep breaths, not managing stress well, eating poorly, not sleeping. The more these things that compound, the more that you have the potential for your pain to linger longer because you're going to have decreased circulation. So 
I really, really recommend trying some of the techniques that I mentioned today, such as the contrast hydrotherapy, such as systemic enzymes, such as red light therapy, such as breathing, working on possibly needing oxygen or, or getting a sleep study at the very least to figure out if you have some issues going on in that case with sleep. And considering working on your movement, working on the tissue movement too, some little myofascial, some lymphatic drainage in the area to help with pain. All of these suggestions together might sound like a lot. I'm not recommending trying them all at once, one step at a time. So identify what your issue is. Are you puffy with chronic pain? That's dampness in the Chinese world. Are you stressed out? You've got pain fixed in a couple different areas. That's stuck blood. Do you have trauma? Stuck blood also. The longer the trauma's been around, the more it relates to whole body stuck blood. You need to work on your circulation. Do you have an autoimmune type of condition where it's really hot, it's inflamed, there's damage to joints? You got to work on decreasing that inflammation. Autoimmune wellness Com. That website is great for looking at ways to eat to de-inflame your body in general, but you need systemic enzymes. Then start to work on circulation from there because chances are if you have chronic autoimmune arthritis issues, you're having trouble moving in general. So you're going to be in a lot of pain. Now, if you have cold type pain, meaning your body feels cold, you don't move much. You're maybe you're puffy as well. You got to work on warming up that body. Got to work on circulation, essential oils, magnesium baths, so Epsom salt baths, amazing for you. And working on circulation on a level of lymphatic drainage. This can help you to start getting to the area where you can move more. I have so many people in my practice that come in with the diagnosis of fibromyalgia and the pain is so bad everywhere in their body, they're not moving well. Well, you got to move to get circulation. How do you do that better? We start working on the basics. Warm your body up a little bit. Eat foods like ginger. Add topical oils like Dr. Bob's medicated oil to help with circulation. Deep blue. Take a bath in the stuff. No, don't do that. I'm kidding. But you can put a couple drops in a bath with some Epsom salt. Boom. Get your body circulating better. Get some good massage you can do to yourself. Gentle lymphatic drainage massage. Because for most people with fibromyalgia, pain massages don't feel so great. Some tolerate it, but point being, get that moving. Work on the systemic enzymes too. These are areas to kind of think about. Now, I said first and foremost, for those with the cold type, it's really you got to warm yourself up. And I do recommend Epsom salt baths first with a little bit of essential oils. That would be the place to start. And then I know I went into a tangent and and described some other stuff. I'm just so excited about working on pain. So I have went through pain today. I went through the characteristics of how pain affects your body, explained very basically on a Chinese medicine level. I've also talked about what you can do to get out of this pain because it's, it's, it's horrible when you have a condition that's invisible. People can't see it. It's hard to quantify it. And it's frustrating to explain to someone who doesn't understand. So start today by doing one thing to help with your circulation and reduction of inflammation in your body. I'm going to put in my podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com all of my protocols and what I spewed off in terms of the different conditions and what to do. I highly recommend you check it out. And stay tuned, I will be doing more podcasts on pain as, and inflammation, circulation, and the basics because it's something that is so overlooked that I can't let it be overlooked anymore. All right, folks, you've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, health junkies, Dr. Janine Kraus here. I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Guess what? I have a Facebook group. It's called Anti-Aging Health Tips with Dr. Janine Krauss. So if you want a little bit more of the Health Fix podcast, head over to my Facebook group and let's chat. Now I'm also offering a health transformation and restoration program. It's a one-on-one with me. 
And it's for folks who are sick and tired of going to doc after doc and health coach after health coach and not seeing the results that they want and deserve. In my program, I'm working with folks with transformation. So this isn't just a light program. This is a big deal. I'm going to change how you think about your health and your life kind of program. And I'm super excited to offer it to folks. And if you are at all interested, we should talk. I'm offering 45 minutes free with me chatting to see if and how I can help you. And you can get all the details over at my website, drjkrausnd.com. All right, you've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Subscribe, rate, and share info. 